Hi, my name is Jacob Martinez. I run the actmatrix.com. Here is a brief introduction to the CFT matrix. The standard act matrix consists of two intersecting lines. The vertical line is the distinction between inner and outer experience. The horizontal is the distinction between moving toward who and what matters to us and away from unwanted or uncomfortable inner experience. The CFT matrix, as I'm calling it, uses a similar vertical line. This vertical line represents where our attention is focused at any given moment. It can be focused externally on anything happening outside of our body or attention can be focused internally on our thoughts, emotions, memories, and other cognitive or bodily experiences. The horizontal axis of the CFT matrix is a distinction between the natural evolutionary survival instincts, mechanisms, and actions we engage in, and actions that bring a sense of vitality, meaning, and connection to our lives. On the survival end, we lump things like our threat system responses, our basic drive responses, such as hunger, desire for sex, and so on. We also include our verbal ability. Since this ability to derive relationships arbitrarily was key to our survival as a species. On the vital end, we include anything at all that brings a sense of vitality to living, as well as the people, places, and things that are vitally important to us. My collection of tiki mugs is not necessary for my survival, but they add something to my life. Certain experiences may be on both the vital end of the spectrum and the survival end. Eating, for example, is necessary for survival. But the experience of eating often adds connection and vitality to our lives. There is a reason we don't just eat nutritionally complete, flavorless gruel all the time. So the two axes are not either-or frameworks. They are fluid spectrums. When we put these two axes together, we get a coordinate plane that can help us sort out our life experiences, analyze the function of our behavior, and increase compassion and psychological flexibility. Our emotion systems can be seen along this coordinate plane. Our threat, drive, and affiliative systems are necessary for survival. They also kick in when we are striving toward something vitally important to us or when someone we care about is hurt or in danger. Likewise, across the vertical axis, our emotion systems involve loops between our cognitive and emotional experiences and our outward behavior. These loops can be workable or unworkable depending on how they function for you. We see ourselves get caught up in unworkable loops all the time. When we orient ourselves on this coordinate plane by asking ourselves a few simple questions, we step back from being stuck inside the loop to viewing the pattern of behavior safely and non-judgmentally. From there, we can make choices that are compassionate and flexible. To orient yourself on a matrix, ask these two questions. Where is my attention focused right now? Am I closer to the survival end of the spectrum or the vital end of the spectrum? From there, we can assess what kinds of emotion systems are at play. If my attention is focused on the inside in the form of rumination about a past painful event, and if I am feeling my survival instincts kicking in, fight, flight, freeze, etc., that puts me in the bottom left quadrant of the matrix. In this moment, I can see that my threat system is active and looping. I might be isolating myself, mentally beating myself up, 
or all sorts of other things. If my attention is focused externally on a wonderful day at the park with my family, then that puts me in the top right quadrant of the matrix. Here, it is likely that my drive and affiliative systems are active and looping. I'm driven to continue having a great time and to find the perfect spot to lay down the picnic blanket. Pinpointing what quadrant we are in gives us clues as to what emotion systems are likely active and how they're working for us. The act of orienting yourself on a matrix is a mindfulness practice and increases connection to the present moment. When working with clients in session, we can help them pinpoint what quadrant they're in throughout sessions by practicing with a matrix drawn in front of them. Using Socratic dialogue and asking them to stop and check in with where they are along the two axes facilitates a compassionate, mindful ability. Once we are oriented in a quadrant, we then validate, process, and explore what is happening in the here and now for the client. What is it like to be stuck in this threat loop right now? What is the cost? What are the benefits? We also help clients reclaim a compassionate stance toward their experience. We can do this in a variety of ways. But the CFT matrix has a few questions in each quadrant that help this process along. In an effort to build flexibility in the face of their difficult experiences, we gently nudge clients out of the quadrant they are stuck in and toward a more comprehensive view of their life. If a client is stuck in a quadrant, deeply suffering and overwhelmed, we can use questions to expand their attention toward other areas of the matrix. What does this pain tell you about what is important to you? Feeling this intense anxiety must mean that you care about something so deeply. What might that be? Does what you did make sense given the situation? Or is it something that any other person in your shoes would have done the same way? How much am I seeing the difficulties of raising a child as a problem? And how much am I seeing those difficulties as part of the beauty of having three amazing sons? What might you have done if you could rewind time and do things differently? By expanding outward into other areas of the matrix, we invoke compassionate perspective shifting. The center circle of the CFT matrix represents the self, which can exist as many different versions. At times, we are the compassionate self. At others, we are the anxious self, the critical self, the driven self, the deeply frightened self. We can use the center circle to see how different versions of ourselves would interact and respond with our experience. How would the compassionate you respond in this moment? Do you notice your critical self at play here? What does the committed you have to say about that? We can also use the matrix as a template for compassion-focused imagery exercises. Expanding compassion outward from the center circle toward the people, things, and places that matter most to us. Compassion flowing toward our own thoughts, feelings, and actions. And from outward in. Compassion flowing from the people, places, and things toward us, compassion flowing from our own inner experience towards ourselves. At first, our compassion itself may seem very small, especially compared to our critical self. 
we may have a much easier time extending compassion in certain directions or toward certain types of experiences, but not others. Over time, we can work to strengthen and expand our compassion itself so that it encompasses the matrix and comes into contact with each quadrant equally. The CFT matrix can also be used to practice compassionate letter writing. The CFT matrix is also a way of seeing how our mind is organized at any given time, an alternative to the spider diagram. Any CFT practice, including all of the compassionate mind training skills, can be facilitated through the CFT matrix collaboratively with clients. Using the CFT matrix in session can be a great way of helping clients feel a part of the case formulation process. It's something they can take home, review, and use to keep track of their skills, experience, and progress through therapy.